Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, one of the reasons why I originally started doing YouTube, actually it was Facebook at first, was because of the narrative you always got about Tony Romo and the Dallas Cowboys. They used to always say, Tony Romo's a choker, but he had had more comeback victories than anybody else else you know and in, in, you know when you for a while there Dak Prescott was in that same ilk where they were coming back but of course no matter what you do they would spin it to be something negative they would say oh well you know if he hadn't been playing so bad he wouldn't have to come back well the fact that you were able to come back in in the NFL is kind of crazy in fact it's kind of crazy that some of the people that have jobs and i'm you know maybe i'm jealous because i'm here not in my mama's basement but my own basement doing what i think is as good a job as some of these people or at least having better takes i don't have the bells and the whistles or the the clothing or the studio or all the people that are doing the work and stuff for you where you should be better than what we do here on YouTube as, you know, guys that are doing this as their uh, love of the sport and trying to set the record straight. You should be above and beyond a reproach. But Dan Orlowski, maybe it should be just Dan is just lousy. That, that's what we should just call him. Dan is lousy. That, that should be his new name because he is just lousy. Um, he actually kind of got bitch slapped by first things first, today um the thing is it's hard to play clips from you know fox they always kind of get you but i'm gonna just play the sound bite here so you can listen to this because this is kind of funny number five most to lose nfl pundits including some that will remain remain nameless that wilds was watching this morning with fury in his eyes talking about josh allen's actually the mvp if josh allen plays poorly and that mvp for a seven and six team it had a half life of three days number four exactly here it is you're, you're gonna i'm gonna play this clip because in this clip it's kind of crazy because I played it this morning and it kind of blew past me because <clears throat> the conversation that Cam Newton had about game managers, you know, Dan Orlowski's wish somebody would say, you know what, you're a game manager because you weren't even good enough to be considered a game manager. And he was trying to take it to another level where he literally said, you know, there's only like five or six guys that are difference makers, you know, in the NFL. And he was saying, you know, Lamar Jackson. He was saying, you know, Pat Mahomes. And um, he was also saying, he said, Justin Herbert. And I was like, what has Justin Herbert done to be considered a game changer? Their team is scoring 10 points less per game than the Dallas Cowboys. He's never won a playoff game, even though he had four takeaways in the first quarter against Jacksonville last year. And then we go to Josh Allen, because again, we keep hearing this whole thing. And I pointed out in the last five games, the last five weeks, they're two and three. He's had seven TDs and five interceptions and a fumble and an 80 rating that Tommy DeVito, Tommy DeVito has eight TDs three interceptions at a hundred rating in comparison to Josh Allen play for the New York Giants that don't have anywhere near the talent. They don't have anybody that comparable to Stefan Diggs to throw to. And they've got a three and two record and he only started in four of those games. If you take the games he started, he's three and one. But here you have Dan Orlowski saying, you know, Josh Allen in some people's minds, is a second or third position player for MVP. So wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> Vegas has basically Dak and Brock Purdy as the top two. So if you say second or third, that means you're taking one of those two out. Some people have expanded it, like Shady McCoy, to say Tariq Hill, although Tariq Hill got injured and that might hurt him. Tariq Hill. Some people might even say Brandon Albury, who has 30 field goal kicks. 
30 to start a career, which is an NFL record. Um, some people would have maybe Pat Mahomes. I don't know who besides Dan Orlowski would have Josh Allen second or third. This is the kind of crock of crap that you get. Now, I want you to listen to this because his whole take is if Josh Allen wins and he vaults to the top. What about Lamar Jackson? What about Lamar Jackson? Lamar Jackson, who Lamar Jackson, who is, you know, doing things in Baltimore. A lot more than Josh Allen. But let's listen in a little bit. The Bills, meanwhile, they probably need to win out if they're going to get themselves into the dance. Danny, what will decide this huge matchup in Buffalo? In motion for Buffalo's offense. I like Buffalo in this game. I think Buffalo wins this game, and I think when they win, Josh Allen when they win. top of the MVP list. Well, he, he goes to the top. Probably second or third in a lot of people's eyes, but if he wins this What game, people, Dan? What people? The lead for MVP. Uh, he's played at that level, and I think if you what? look at the style of this game, Buffalo's offense is Joe Brady, who um, Harry kind of talked about, started using motion. Um, they've become a very difficult offense to stop, and I think Dallas's defense really struggles with it. If you go back to Kansas City last week, I think one of the things that stood out was how they used different motions at the snap to get the four strong formation. See how like it forces all this communication from the defense? There's four guys for Buffalo at the top. That's Steph by himself at the bottom. One-on-one, -on -one, we're throwing to him. If you don't play him one-on-one, -on -one, we have numbers advantage. So there's that easy throw to the tight end early on in that football game. You go to, again, different form of motion, but it's the same end formation, four strong. Now you're forcing another level of communication from the defense. It's gonna take two guys for the defense to cover essentially one person, and that's how they get James Cook down the seam for free. And then getting the ball to Josh Allen or potential backs in your run game. You hop the back, snap the football, hold the defensive end. Again, four strong formation. Josh Allen has become a runner again in Joe Brady's offense. And the thing about Dallas's defense, and Harry talked on it, yeah, they're great. They struggle against motion. When you motion out the snap, they are a different defense. So I think. I think that it he's like Buffalo. So Philly 500. About what the Cowboys defense has to do against Josh Allen this weekend. Speed him up. <clears throat> Speed him up. And that's what this Cowboys defense can do because I right. think they have a legitimate advantage against that Buffalo Bills offensive line. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the Dallas Cowboys defensive front. Those guys, they have the best by a lot in the National Football League. And I think, and listen, what Danny said is absolutely true. The things that Buffalo are doing offensively can cause some problems. But the one thing I would say that just lining up and just playing football against this Dallas Cowboys defense, I don't know how this Buffalo offense there you go. can be able to slow down all of these guys up front mm -hmm. for the Dallas Cowboys. So the interesting thing is that the Bills are 7-6 and six on the outside looking in. And I do believe they can make the playoffs. I do think they will make the playoffs. But they do have to win out. But for me, the big question, and a lot of people think is, will Dak make everyone a believer this weekend? Mm. Will the Cowboys make everyone a believer? That they can go on the road and beat a very good team? Can Dak go blow for blow with one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL? Are, you know, are the Cowboys a legit Super Bowl threat? Despite everything, despite the numbers that Dak is putting up, there's still doubts about whether this team can close out the season on a, on a hot streak and then get into the playoffs. So I'm actually looking at Dallas more in this game. Well, it's a fascinating game because as hot as the Cowboys have been, the schedule's flipped now. Yeah. The Eagles have a much easier schedule the rest of the way. And we all understand that, that having winning that division is so critically sure. important to get the games at home, to stay out of San Francisco. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm sitting here as... Dan Orlovsky says, you know, second or third in vaults to the top. So you're telling me that a team that is on the outside looking in to make the playoffs, where he leads the NFL in turnovers and has been up and down all season long, who currently sits in at fifth points-wise per game, where Lamar Jackson is scoring more points per game, where Brock Purdy is scoring more points per game, where Tua is scoring more points by end game. And let me say Tua's offense is scoring five points. And where the Dallas Cowboys are scoring six points more than Josh Allen, who again, the only category that he leads the NFL in is... Wait for it. 
interceptions. This is crazy how Josh Allen gets a pass because he literally said he went through the litany of quarterbacks that were basically winning the Super Bowl that were top three in turnovers in the last three years and said Baker Mayfield, he was one of the lowest. You take one of these other guys. It's kind of funny that Dak Prescott, who was tied for the lead of interceptions last year, had... When he was playing the highest scoring offense, but we killed him for turning over. And now we got Josh Allen blowing out, blowing out the turnovers that Dak Prescott had last year. And now it's no, it's no big deal. He should be MVP. Come on, Dan is lousy. Dan is lousy. It's kind of crazy. Oh, well, what can I say? It's just crazy. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, we're going to be doing live at 8.15 tonight. I hope you guys join us. We'll be talking about this crap that we get here, as well as the Dallas Cowboys getting ready to take on the Buffalo Bills. As always, you know I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Peace.